Hey there, fellow marketers, Professor Walters here, and today we are in Vienna, Austria at the Prater Park. It's a really cute amusement park here in Vienna. You know, they got some old school rides, they got some new school rides. If you look back there, you can see some of them out there. There's a famous Ferris wheel here, all kinds of cool stuff, but there's also some ones that are kind of dogs, kind of dead, like this one right behind me that no one is using. I've seen nothing happening there, and it looks like they haven't had water in there for a couple years. <laughs> and it kind of got me thinking, look, if you're a company, you have a lot of different products you might sell, a lot of different business units. If you're an amusement park, you've got a lot of different rides. And these are called your portfolio of rides, your portfolio of products, your portfolio of services, all the different things that you do. And we have to manage those just like you manage your stock portfolio. Okay, I've got some tech, I've got some you know, raw material stuff, I've got some healthcare. I mix it up because I, if I put all my eggs in one basket, if that goes bad, I could have problems, okay? And so the Boston Consulting Group came up with a portfolio analysis. Sometimes it's called the BCG matrix. And it's for companies to really look at all their, their units and say, okay, who's doing well, who's doing poorly, maybe where should we invest, where should we not invest, and things like that. And when they divide it up on one, they look at market share. Are we a big time market player? Like do we have a big market share? Or are we a small time player? So small market share. And then they look at market growth rate. So is it a fast growing market or is it a slow growing market? And when you start dividing up your products, you'll see that a lot of them will fit in these different quadrants. Some are more near a line and stuff like that, but in general, they'll fit in different places, okay? And so if we go through each one of these quadrants, so up and down, you've got you know market growth rate because it makes it easier. The market share is on the bottom going left and right so you have that so the first quadrant i want to talk about is when you have a big market share like you're a big time player but the industry itself isn't growing too quickly so if you think about it this way that would be something like you know red can coca-cola yeah the soft drink industry isn't really growing too fast anymore but red can coke is a huge market player here it's bringing money in and the thing is those cash cows that money they make you use that to finance other investments and i'll talk about the stars and the question marks later but that's just it the cash cow gives you the money because it's just putting out cash for you to do stuff, okay? Some people call it a golden goose, right? And remember, you don't kill the golden goose. That's why usually you don't mess with your 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 golden ticket, right? Your, <laughs> your cash cow. And here in Prater, there's a famous Ferris wheel here. Now, there's not a lot of ton of people like lining up for hours to go there like some of the other rides, but it consistently is making money. It's actually seen as a symbol of one, one of the symbols of the city of Vienna. And so you're like, yeah, that's our cash cow. We know people are gonna go on that, the, the, the major Ferris wheel here and we're gonna make it money to invest and put up other rides, which is cool. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about, we're gonna stay in that, hey, we've got really good market share, and now we're gonna look at is what happens if you have really good market share, and then we have, dun da dun, super growth rate. So this might be the iPad, you know, maybe, 10 years ago when it first came out and the iPad was like the biggest market share and it was a star for Apple. And that's what you have in that high market share, high growth rate, that's a star. This is one of the things you're like, yes, things are going great. You're gonna invest more in there because they're the big time plan, fast growing stuff. There's so much more money we can make from there. And so you really kind of, it shines. That's why it's called a star. It shines, it gives you money, all kinds of stuff and it keeps growing. But the thing is, those stars don't always start out as stars. Sometimes you're a small time player, not a big time player. So let's say you're in a fast growing industry, okay? We're in the, you know, the apps industry. It's really fast growing, all this stuff's there, but we're only a small time player, okay? So if you're a small time player, so small market share, but a fast growing industry, that is called a question mark because you don't know. Will it go well and become a star or will it crash down and become a dog? We don't know yet, but what we do know is this industry is growing so fast that there's potential for us. So maybe we can start small, but we can grow big. I mean, think about it. Nokia used to make, you know, like wood products, okay? Then they started out with this. They were like, hey, mobile phones, that could be kind of big. They're growing. Why don't we try making a mobile phone? And it started out as a question mark and then it grew huge to a big star. But now, of course, it's kind of a dog because no one's buying Nokia phones anymore and that's why when you go from a, a question mark it doesn't always end well eventually sometimes you cycle through and you become a dog and what a dog is is when your product is in a low growth industry or no growth industry or maybe negative growth industry 
and you're a small time player. I mean, why would you even want to invest in anything? Why would you want that product around anymore? That's why the dogs out there, when economic times get tough, those are usually the first products, boom, that get kicked out the door, okay? I got to feed my family. I got to feed the cow, make sure I get some money coming in. I don't got money to feed the dog here. And that's what ends up what happening. These are the products that get shooed to the side. And the thing is, I know you're thinking, well, why would anybody have a dog in their portfolio anyway? Well, the thing is, is it's not always starting out as a dog. Think about it. Sometimes it's a question mark that doesn't work out and it becomes a dog. Or sometimes products cycle through. I mean, think about the first PlayStation. When it came out, it was a total question mark because the console game industry was growing like crazy. And then we didn't know what we were going to be. And it started off as a small time player, right? And so it was just, it was a question mark. But then it just took off and oh my gosh, that PlayStation 1 became a star. It, I mean, it ran Sega out of the industry and almost put Nintendo under and stuff like that because it did so well. But then over time, the growth rate slowed down, right? And it became a cash cow because now oh, we're getting our, our money off the, from the company selling the software and stuff like that. Most of you have already bought the gaming unit, but they still have it. So it became a cash cow for us. But the thing is, then the PlayStation 2 came out. And when that became a star, I mean, are you going to buy a PlayStation 1 if there's a PlayStation 2 out there? No, I mean, I've got kids. I know myself. I don't want the old model of a console. I want the newest one. And so that PlayStation 1 that started as a question mark, went to a star, then a cow. By the time PlayStation 2 was out there and established, it became a dog. And nowadays, they don't make PlayStations anymore. PlayStation 1 or 2 or, heck, probably even 3. I mean, I don't even know what we're on now. 5 or 6 now, PlayStations. You, you see that and things cycle through. And the thing is, companies want to do this. They want to divide these things up so they know where should we invest our money? Where should we put our money? What should we be doing? Because for our cash cow, I, look, it's making us a lot of money, but there's not a lot of growth rates. So maybe I don't invest a lot to kind of promote it because it's not really going to pay off in terms of growth. So maybe what I want to do is find those stars and promote that one so we can make the bigger money now and, and get that going versus something else, okay? Or maybe you think about, hey, I got this cash cow. Let's take those earnings to help out that question mark. So hopefully we can turn it into a star. So I hope this helps you understand a bit better about the portfolio matrix or the BCG matrix, okay? So you can kind of analyze the different maybe products in your firm or parts of your firm or things like that. So you can see is where should we invest? Where do we divest and what should we be doing? Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if you're studying for an exam, I hope it helps you get ready for that. If you're trying to decide what to do with your, your business units and stuff like that, I hope this simple little thing helps you have a better idea what you should do. And I'll say bye from Vienna.